Our next story is a, is a story from SpaceX. But uh, there are so many stories from SpaceX, this, as there are every month now. Um, we didn't know how can we des decide what story we're going to tell. So let's see, what story will we tell? <laughs> Yay. Yay. So Patrick, All right, tell so us about Starlink. All right, so, it's, so I'm up on this one. What was uh, SpaceX uh, up to uh, last uh, May when they launched this uh, uh, Falcon 9? Well, not, not quite. Well, I'll get there. <laughs> no, but some, you're, somebody's... That's a song, right? Yes. Yeah, you're, yeah, you get a prize. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. There, that was one of the songs. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so they, they launched this Falcon 9 at night, and um, this mission, his mission patch for it, it's called Starlink. Now, Starlink is uh, Elon Musk, Musk's um, bid to uh, bring global internet, high-speed global internet, to the entire world. That is significant. And uh, to uh, this first launch was to uh, deploy a large contingent of uh, satellites, up to about 60 of them. We can look at the next slide. And you can see them all packed up there in, in the uh, payload bay. There's actually there's a pack of 30 here and another pack of 30 satellites. They're kind of like flat, laid down like a deck of cards. And uh, almost like a corn on the cob, actually. But, uh, <laughs> but they're all pa neatly packed into that uh, payload, uh, fair payload fairing. Now, just to give you an idea of uh, uh, the size of the, this big satellite stack, uh, we have a Tesla for scale. <laughs> That's the actual, actual Tesla and the actual same size fairing. Right. So um, this is an hour after the launch, and you can see uh, from the, uh, the upper stage of uh, the Falcon 9, we're looking down at the whole array of satellites. And uh, after an hour, uh, hour after launch, all these satellites were basically uh, uh, deployed. They just like, like a, they were kind of deployed like a whole stack of cards um, into a 53 degree orbital plane. Now, a day later, um, over the Netherlands, um, there was a string of, uh, of uh, lights in the sky. People thought, wow, UFOs. In fact, uh, the UFO uh, site, sites there were, were actually um, uh, really uh, slammed. Uh, this, this image was actually taken by um, an amateur astronomer. He used a video camera. And he knew exactly what these were. These are, in fact, the, uh, all the satellites but, uh, that uh, SpaceX launched, space, Starlink satellites, but now, now they're kind of separated a little bit more. Next, we see the video that he took, and you can see the string of satellites moving across the sky. Has a anybody seen this yet? Anyone seen this in the sky? Just okay, did, yeah. yeah. So, so this is a very unusual sight. And, and it was unusual because uh, uh, SpaceX said that these satellites would not be very visible. In fact, they, some of them sparkled like as bright as the brightest planet. So, um, in fact, um, two days later after that, Tony and I went out because uh, it was predicted that these string of satellites would pass over Los Angeles. But we took binoculars and we can only see two, I think. Yeah, least. one or two. I couldn't tell yeah. if one of them was the same one a few minutes later in a different part of the sky. Right, right. It's from that train. Though. Right. Now, this image was taken at Lowell Observatory. It was basically tracking the stars while the, uh, the, the uh, stream of uh, uh, Starlink satellites uh, went by. And um, on the SpaceX's site, this is, this, is what, this is an artist's impression of it. And you can see that um, these satellites actually glint. They're kind of made of silvery material. And uh, this actually caused a lot of concern because this, those pictures and, and the video uh, appeared on, on the internet. And uh, these were some of the comments that came back. Uh, so and, and from general public, and too. General public and general public and people who enjoy the night sky, um, yeah. and especially in, you know, in dark areas where they can see the Milky Way. So yeah, the good news is it's hard to see it here in Los Angeles because the light pollution is so bad <laughs> right. that there aren't, the scar, stars aren't that bright. But, uh, but if you are blessed with a really, truly dark sky, then, then they do get in the way. So um, this next set of tweets was, was from uh, 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 some major astronomical um, organizations. Uh, the International Astronomical Union, uh, the uh, National Radio Astronomy Observatory, and the International Dark Sky Association all released uh, statements uh, about the uh, uh, Starlink uh, 
uh, satellites. And uh, here's the statement from the International Astronomical Union, which uh, they said is a dark and radio quiet sky is not only essential to advancing our understanding of the universe, of which we are a part, but also as a resource for all humanity and for the protection of nocturnal wildlife. Now, the radio astronomy uh, group, uh, to date, SpaceX uh, demonstrated their respect for our concerns and support for astronomy. They were a little bit kinder because they had worked with SpaceX to make sure that the frequencies at which these satellites transmit don't interfere with the frequencies they're trying to observe for radio astronomy purposes. However, the International Dark Sky Association wasn't too kind. Uh, International Dark Sky Association is concerned about the impacts of further development and regulatory launch approvals of these satellites. We urge all parties to take precautionary efforts to protect the unaltered nighttime environment before the deployment of new large-scale satellite groups. So and it's what not just SpaceX. There's Amazon has another project yes. in the works, and there this is this is coming, and uh, there isn't much of a regulatory framework for it. Um, there so, is not. Yeah. So uh, Elon had to uh, was kind of taken aback, and uh, here was one of his replies. Uh, there are already on the left. There are already 4,900 satellites in orbit, which people notice about zero percent of the time. Starlink uh, won't even be seen by anyone unless uh, looking very carefully and will have zero impact on advancement in astronomy. We need to move telescopes to orbit anyway. Atmospheric attenuation is terrible. Well, that didn't go down too <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> Got an angry reply from me. <laughs> and from Tony. <laughs> I think he, he was he was it was more of a knee-jerk reaction, and he was very unprepared for the um, the outcry from the astronomical uh, community. However, someone suggested to Elon, uh, why don't you just reduce the brightness of your satellites, the ones that uh, the ones in orbit's too late? So he basically said, agreed. Uh, sent a note to Starlink uh, Starlink team uh, last week, specifically regarding the albedo reduction. That's the brightness and the reflectance and we'll get a better uh, sense of value of when uh, satellites uh, have been raised, uh, have raised orbits and arrays are tracking to the sun. So, all right, so what's happened since uh, uh, May 23rd? Well, originally the satellite started as a clump, so we imagine a big red clump in, in that orbit. And this is from uh, uh, Heavens Above. And uh, on, since June 5th, the satellites have started to spread around that 50-degree uh, orbital plane. And eventually, they will be uh, uh, spread out evenly six degrees apart. Now, that particular 60, 60 satellites doesn't constitute a uh, global internet system. So, um, the FCC actually approved um, last uh, November uh, SpaceX, SpaceX to launch uh, up to 7,000 internet satellites. That's in addition to the approval that they gave uh, SpaceX to launch in, uh, back in April of last year of 5,000 satellites. So I circled in red there, the real headline is there's 12,000 satellites that will be, um, uh, will be launched by SpaceX. Mm -hmm. And uh, the actual number is just a bit <coughs> under here. And, uh, uh, they, uh, the FCC has approved all of this, and the whole constellation for global internet, high-speed global inter internet, will be this number by the year 2027 in three orbital shells. You can see the color coding for uh, the altitudes of these satellites. So, so I think that's a story we have to watch into the future because there's obviously quite a lot of discussion, and a lot of people are unprepared, including the regulatory environment. Um, did you have a comment? <laughs> yeah, it's it's the. F I was just watching this, thinking, am I supposed to be terrified? It seems terrible, but uh, but I, I can't tell anymore. If it, you know, it's an interesting debate because global internet to people who can't otherwise get it, night sky preservation. If they are able to reduce the brightness, you know, that yeah. it's it's a it's one of those kinds of trades that. But who makes those decisions? What environment? What is the? As I always keep saying, regulatory environment. But there's a reason for that. Um, but if somebody would have said to us a thousand years ago that we plan on basically paving all of the earth on, we, we wouldn't believe that this was possible, right? Yeah. And now that's basically what we're doing: cities and roads and millions and millions of miles, and we all take it for granted every day. So I, it's hard to know how to feel about it. Yeah.